and it is not sideways. Get the abigail there. Let's see, how much of the board is it getting? So, as we last left off, we're going to basically transfer charge, and so we are going to transfer charge from the rabbit fur onto the PVC pipe. Now, inherently, there's no immediate reason why the electrons are being transferred one way or the other. Um, through experimentation, you can pretty much be sure that electrons are being transferred to the PVC pipe. So, and also, the electrons are much easier to draw on the board than protons or a minus sign is much easier to draw than a plus sign. So we're gonna go that route. We will assume that this is negatively charged. Now what's gonna happen as I bring this closer to the electroscope? As I move it this way, at what point can you no longer see? So I can still see. You can still see? But it will go away, it will go away from the PVC pipe. What's gonna go away from the PVC pipe? The, uh, the strips. As in, they're going to fall. Yeah. Let's see if that happens. Uh, they're not falling. Matter of fact, they seem to be doing this. Why? Is it sentient? And it just said, Mario said we're going that way, so we're going to go this way. <laughs> I said, I think that's the news. Okay, all right. So if Mario left, what would happen? Uh, it would do exactly what it did. It did? Okay. So it's going to do it no matter what? He's already jinxed it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let's just pretend for the moment that it's not sentient and it has no idea what Mario said. Why would the leaves do this? I, I heard conduction and I heard, or induction. 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 And well, I said they repel each other because they're both negatively charged. Why are they negatively charged? Officially, it's not induction, by the way. Well, I'll show you induction in a moment. I know. I, I can't remember if after we're done from the course. So that... <laughs> it'll come back like, uh, yeah. it'll just be a joy every time it comes back. Because of the flow of electrons. From what? From the PVC pipe. To the knob and then okay. to the so why do you think electrons came from the PVC pipe? Uh, because it's a, a neg negatively charged. Alright, so if, if the electrons went from here onto that, then when I pulled it away, what would the leaves do? Would they go kind of start to go back to the room? Would they go all the way back down? Uh Maybe they will stay for a bit. I'm not sure. All right, so, but if you're claiming the electrons are coming from this, this means this has an excess of electrons. Yeah. And, well, actually, let's talk about the fundamental rules here. What do you know about charges besides positive, negative, and zero? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have some basic rules here to guide us here. Opposites attract, and similarly or oppositely, like repels. And the other bit, what moves most of the time? Negative charges or positive charges? Negative charges. Why? Yeah, they're easy to strip off. So, 99 plus percent of the time, the electrons move, the protons do not. If you want to move protons, here's how you move protons. You watching? There we go, move protons. 
So when we're talking about moving of charge here, yeah, the leaves do lift and therefore all the atoms are moving and therefore protons naturally are lifting, but we're talking about the flow from one, uh, from one place to another of the charge as opposed to just the whole thing physically moving. So if electrons transferred from here to there, right, I'm neutralizing it, I'm acting as a ground, I'm acting as either a reservoir for the electrons that flow onto me or I am acting as a source of electrons, whatever it needs, considering I'm much larger than it is. So it is neutral. If the electrons go from the pipe onto here, this will be negatively charged. Well, the light foretells, so where do the electrons go? Uh, it depends upon at what point in the experiment you're talking. Why would it cause a positively charged area in the leaves? Because the electrons. Oh, oh. uh, yeah, okay. Won't the electrons from the. I'm just asking. Won't the electrons from the. Um, knob? Knob flow towards the leaves? Okay. And then. <clears throat> they repel because they're negatively charged. Okay, I'll buy that. But then when I pull it away, mm -hmm. are the excess electrons still there? Yes. Okay, so it's negatively charged. So the leaves should still repel, right? Yes. Did they? We got one person saying no. A number of people just staring. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> All right, as so I bring it closer, the leaves separate. I pull it away and the leaves go back to where they were. Did I paint a colorful enough picture for you to, or can you see it? No, I've seen it, but no. Okay. So if I'm not trans, if I am transferring electrons, then they should stay apart. You want to transfer electrons, here we go. Transfer electrons and they still are staying apart. So why did they separate and I didn't touch it? The field force, the electricity force. Okay, you want to expand on that? Uh, Generally electric force, just by the way. You don't have to like directly touch it. The force is like around the pipe. So when you come in close contact, then it will distribute the electrons. Through. What electrons? The electrons on the pipe will be distributed to the knob. So you're saying the electrons will transfer onto the knob? Not directly. Well, the force caused by the electron, the field force. All right. So the force from the electrons on the pipe do what? Cause a uh, electricity force that then repels and goes to the knob. Almost there. Precious? Um, is it um, on the knob, there are already like positive and negative charges? I hope so. Yeah, and then when you bring it closer, since it's, it's negative, then the negative charges on the knob itself um, like repel the negative charge on the PVC and then it flows towards the leaves. Okay. So if you think about, you've got Anglo-Saxon territory here and the Romans attack and the Anglo-Saxons who didn't want to fight scattered away. Perfect analogy. <laughs> so they are, they do get scared. The electrons get scared. They shoot off into the leaves. The leaves spread apart. When I take it away, the threat is gone. The electrons return. So it goes back to neutral. But when I touch it, I've now left excess electrons. So now I've actually transferred electrons. Now at this point, probably not a lot of electrons, but if I rub it back and forth here, I can transfer more. 
Why do I have to rub it back and forth? I will agree with the more and more going on through the metal ball, but um, you, you lost one fundamental thing about the wide PVC pipe. I mean, if I did the experiment with a metal rod, would I get the same results? No, it's an insulator. And so because it's an insulator, they, um, they would make, like, yeah, the distributive process while in the metal rod, but it's evenly distributed. Yeah, so on the PVC pipe? Yeah. Okay. So now that it is possible for them to jump through the air, I assume everyone in here has shot him or herself at some point in your life from uh, shuffling across carpet or getting out of your seat at a gas station, things like that. So it is possible that they can jump across, but you know, do I have enough electrons on here to do that? Well, I didn't see a spark, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't one. Let's see if I can get close. Yeah, I think some jumped there. I don't think I actually touched it. I, I guess Precious, you had the best view. Yeah, you didn't actually touch it. Okay, so we had a little bit of a spark there. We'll, we'll get bigger sparks in a, in a moment. All right, so when I touch it, we actually can transfer electrons. It's close enough. Either there's a small enough gap that they will jump, or by touching it, they will transfer. Now has excess electrons, and now I need to get rid of it if I want to restart the experiment. And you do that just by, well, grounding it. You need to touch it to some larger surface. And there we go. Now, charging by induction. Like most physics demonstrations, this works beautifully when I did it by myself. But now with witnesses, who knows? All right, I'm gonna charge it up. I'm not, I shouldn't actually touch it. I'm not trying to, I'm not planning to transfer any electrons. Uh, from the PVC pipe, at least. Neutralize my hand. All right, so I get it close, and hopefully it will, all right, they separate. I'm now going to neutralize these by touching it. So now they've gone back to, I basically drained off the electrons and I pull this away and it did not work. So, this was not the demonstration you were looking for. <laughs> Separate. Pull away. Come on. <laughs> All right. They did get stuck together there. There is a small little separation there. We can also test that just by my touching it. Will they collapse a little bit more? And they did collapse a little bit more. So that's charging by induction. I didn't actually transfer electrons from the PVC pipe to it. Let's try this one more time. <clears throat> Maybe you need to be doing a multiple choice test when I'm doing it to really get it to work. <laughs> All right, separate it, neutralize, pull it away, and they separated some. It wasn't, you know, spectacular, unless you didn't see it, in which case it was. So the question is why did they separate? What's the charge of the leaves right now? Positive. Okay. Why so? Negative. Okay. Why so? Because we refracted or we repelled all the electrons down into the leaves, removed them in the positive and charged area. So it's still positive. So yeah. It sounded like you were backing yeah. pressure up. <laughs> I, 
I think you argued against yourself. <laughs> you, are you going to say it's positive now, or did you want to change your argument? Uh, yeah, I think positive might be a better way to go at this point. Okay. Why is it positive? Now that like, my brain is ready to hear that, you, I think you had it, that you could say it again, or well, Precious wants to chime in. All right. I think it's positive because when you touched it, it is like you ground. Oh, when I when I touched it with my hand. Okay. Yes, uh, you grounded it, and when you ground it, the electrons flow to your hand. Right. And then so that leads it to be positive. That's my way of thinking. Yeah, because I didn't add any electrons to this. I never actually touched the PVC pipe to it. And therefore, it had all the electrons it had to start with, it had at the end. Or it had right before I touched it. When I touched it, I pulled those electrons off, leaving it positively charged. When I pulled the PVC pipe away, the electrons then go, whatever electrons are remaining and can still flow, will flow back to where they were, leaving the leaves positively charged, and then like repels again. All right, so now, uh, questions before we bring out the Van der Graaff generator? I will say, if you've seen all the videos, or any, any of the videos, I would say my Van de Graaff generator video is uh, one of my least favorite, because I did that in May. Yeah, in a house that wasn't particularly well air conditioned. But I will say it worked better than I would expect. <clears throat> Anyone with pacemaker or anything like that, any electronic device inside them that for which they depend upon for their life. You should be fine, however, I just, especially front row or Marisol and Precious, it, you have a pacemaker? <laughs> okay. Now, when I first was doing this uh, years ago, a lot more paranoid than I am now, uh, it still can hurt. You're safe. But if you're feeling a little bit anxious, feel free to back up. What's going to happen here is when we turn it on, the bell here is going to slip slightly against the, the carpet or whatever the material is here. Uh, so it's basically going to charge, charge it. It's going to make the belt positively charged. And when the belt comes up to here, it's going to pull the electrons from up to here. Now, if you'll notice, there is a grating here with little spikes. I don't know if you can see the spikes, but at the end of this grating, there are these little tines that are sticking, and you want them close to the belt without touching it. We have had it set up several times where it actually touched the belt, in which case it shreds the belt, and that's always fun. So it's close to it, and so the electrons will, basically as they are drawn to it, will get to the tines and they will jump across small enough that you Presumably get sparks if we actually were looking at it at that point. Uh, I have not done that yet. Uh, turn it on while this thing is up like this. So the ball becomes positively charged. And also, my first year of doing this, let's see, do we have the clock here? Yeah. I didn't have the wand yet, I hadn't found the wand. I had this. And so I had this thing on, you know, like four or five, and I was showing the sparks. At which point a student said the fateful words of, crank it up, Dr. Fox, crank it up. And then, no, no, I, I'm okay. Crank it up, Dr. Fox. I said, no, he said, I'll hold that thing. Okay. So he comes over there, we were across the hall, like this. Cranked it up, the belt was more powerful at that time. Uh, cranked it up, the spark shot from here to his fingertips that were exposed. It hurt. He was, he was okay. <laughs> yeah, there would be a different story if he were not okay. Uh, and so I had ended up grounding this. I basically took a, a wire connected to the screw here and then to the pipe uh, or to the faucet in the other rooms just so that the electrons had a better place to go than his fingers. 
So with that warning, there's another warning that will come up. Uh, it's 100. All right, so as this thing is going, uh, this will become charged down here. And turning it on and off from this point right here will hurt because this becomes charged. And so I have it hooked to an extension cord so I can turn it on and off from here. Matter of fact, sometimes this becomes charged also and I've hurt myself turning it on and off and so I will fumble around with my foot trying to turn it on and off. Feel that into the arm here over here. Oops, nope. There we go. All right, it's still probably charged, and I did have a student years ago who liked to discharge those things with his hand. You know, whatever floats the boat. <laughs> uh, this should also be charged as well, uh, but we should see if we can get another spark here. There we go. Now. Potentially, we could get another one. Let's turn out the lights and see if we can see it. And I just sort of shocked myself on the switch there. Now, this is charged here. We can't wait for it to sort of bleed off into the air or. So now when I turn it on, what's going to happen? And why? Feel free to answer just one of the questions if you want. I think it'll levitate a little bit. Why? Uh, the electrons will rebel against each other between that aluminum. Um, why would the electrons rebel against each other? Uh, like repel. They're both electrons. Electrons are being distributed from the holosphere. Uh, you missed something. I, the electrons are actually getting pulled from it. It's going to be positively charged. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's, it's a like repel, just change it to positive charge. Because this is pulling electrons off of it. Uh, this will eventually look for another source of electrons, this, and they'll all become positively charged. Now, if it could actually levitate and hold it there for a while, that would be really cool. Uh, instead, it's going to lift up slightly and then slide off. It is less dramatic than I would like it to be, but it is what it is. Come on. That worked better than I was expecting. They might get a thrill from discharging these things with their hand. Now let's put the venograph generator near it, or the electroscope near it. Uh, you're going to have to trust what happens, I guess. What do you expect to happen, actually? This will be positively charged. So it'll pull electrons at least to the ball, if not through the air. I don't know if you actually, I don't think you actually see the spark. Uh, I do believe some electrons will go through the air. But that will make this, and therefore they should repel. Uh, we should have an idea about whether they, it actually pulls electrons through the air because as we neutralize this, will that go back to normal? If this gets, goes back to normal when we neutralize the ball, then we never actually pulled electrons from it. Right. 
That's not induction, though. that's conduction, right? Uh, that would be, I would say conduction, yeah. Okay. And then you can do separate. Yeah. All right, so now let's discharge. Say that they got transferred there, oh, or they wouldn't be flowing like a kick at. Is it like an electric fan position? It's like it's like a needle of it's like four seconds of effective all at one second. I wouldn't know what that is. <laughs> uh, electric fence is a circuit. So if you're wearing rubber sole shoes and you touch an electric fence, you should be fine unless it is way high power. In which case it potentially is burning a hole through your shoe. Uh, but if you put your finger in the dirt and touch the electric fence, then the current will run through you. So that's it's slightly different because that's looking for a complete circuit there. All right, so if they are still up like this, we can ground it just by touching it, and it goes back to normal again. So now I take a packing peanut. It is neutral. What I'm going to do, it's hopefully not hurt myself. So far, so good. I'm going to hold it close to it. Now, the packing peanut is an insulator. So we're not going to have any charges flowing through the packing peanut. What do you expect to happen? How? But if it's an insulator, you're saying we're still going to get a charges flowing? They're not flowing, they're just going to distribute, correct? It depends on what you mean by distribute. On the surface. Oh. Not the way I'm thinking or sensing it. As far as the way, I don't like the way you're saying it is, okay. is right. All right, well, let's, let's find out what happens. shooting towards it and then away so the question is why did it go why was it drawn towards it if that is neutral and an insulator oh the electrons are getting pulled towards it why are the electrons getting pulled towards it more than the protons because of the insulator properties are the restricting their flow and therefore the entire body moves versus the well, you're, you're, you're missing one piece. You actually said the key word about 10 minutes ago. It's but positively charged. Right? It is positively charged, yes. It would attract the electrons. From but it would also repel the protons. So why is it attracting the electrons more than it's repelling the protons? Um, probably conduction is not usually the word I would use here, but probably can make an argument for it. It's not like all the electrons end up on the end closest. It's not like I've got my, my insulator here. It's not like all the electrons go to this end. Right, I realized that once you, once you let go, I was like, oh, okay, it's because they're held in place. They, they, the entire body must move. They can't move across the surface of the body. All right, so they're not moving across the whole body, but they are drawing the electrons close. They are pulling on the electrons harder than they're pulling on the protons. Right. But still, why? Mm 
Those electrons don't have to leave the atom. Right. All right, so I've got my atom here. I've got my nucleus, my positive nucleus, and I've got electrons flipped all around here. <laughs> Suddenly, I introduce a huge positive source right here. The electron's not leaving the atom. Well, what is the electron doing? Pulling the atom that way? I, I, how? It still comes down to the electron, the force on the electrons is greater than the force on the protons. Is there a dipole? That's the key word, that's what uh, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. The electron still stays near the atom here, but it tends to hang out now on this side. So this side tends to be negatively charged, this side tends to be positively charged. And so now, since this is closer, it has a greater force on it. It's not a huge force, but it's enough in order for something that light to, with a small flake, to go zooming towards it. And that's based on just the, first, the density of the object, right? For this, for that. Oh, wait. I think like, because of the density, it was so light. And we still have the electron cloud, but based on the properties of the actual chemistry, are just bound enough so that we don't get separation of that. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I would change one word there based upon the physics of it instead of the chemistry of it. Well, it's, yes. You're yes. going to bring that kind of blasphemy into this room? <laughs> yes, unfortunately. We have to, when it comes to styrofoam, because of the way that it's constructed, we still have pockets of air, right? So the, the chemistry of it is actually the reason why it's able to move so violently. Otherwise, we just have a induced dipole within a stagnant object. You see what I'm saying? Like we have kinetic, we have something kinetic because of the properties of the chemistry allowing for uh, something so lightweight and less dense. I, I, I think I, I would agree with you. So there, there's something interesting in just in that fact too, I think. But, yeah. Well, I think the interesting part is the fact that it's an insulator creates these tiny little dipoles. Yes. And light enough so that it will fly. Um, in your, I want to stay on this just one more second now. Okay. Um, in your experience with particle physics, do you ex the, the changing pressure within the atoms because you're having that movement of electricity on the back side of it in the positive charged area? Are you seeing an inrush from uh, the atmosphere? Or are you seeing any type of. Uh, Wait, run that question by again. Are you seeing any type of uh, lower pressure area around the atoms after the electrons move to the other side that cause some type of extra kinetic force? Or is there more of a restrictive force when the inrush of fluid fills that positively charged area in the atoms? I'm still trying to picture. So, so the electrons are, are you picturing sort of the, 